And again, when I see large numbers, I see there's a variable, the same variable in each term, I'm really thinking about greatest common factor, which would make this much easier to work with. So it might not be obvious what the greatest common factor is. It's actually six, but even if you didn't recognize that right away, you might have thought that it was two. You could pull out the two, and then you might have seen that you had a three left behind still as a common factor of all the numbers. If you saw that, then you could just say, okay, it's two times three, which is six. So the greatest common factor is actually six. So if you pull out one that's too small and you see you have another common factor left behind, you just go ahead and pull that one out. Okay, so for my greatest common factor, for the numbers, six is the greatest common factor. For the variable, the smallest exponent I have for any of the x's is one. So there's really a one there, but we don't write it out. So x. Pulling out that greatest common factor, writing it outside the parentheses, it's going to leave behind um, 4x cubed. 6 times 4 is 24. And then x times x cubed is x to the fourth minus 20. And then I pulled out an x, so I have an x squared left behind. 54. I've pulled out a 6. That's going to leave me with 9. And I've pulled an x out, so 9x. And then um, actually 45 times 6 is 270. So there I have a 45 left and then I've already taken out my x. So this is what's left behind. Now, um, I would handle this by using grouping because I've got a trinomial, excuse me, a polynomial, a polynomial with four terms. So I'm gonna use grouping. Recall that to use grouping, you're gonna group the first two terms and the second two terms. And I'm careful to bring that greatest common factor along as I work with this. Okay, with grouping, after you've grouped the first two terms and the second two terms, the next step is going to be out to pull a common factor from each set of two terms. For this first set, 4 and 20 have a common factor of 4. The x terms, x squared is the smallest exponent here, so it's going to be 4x squared. Okay. So pulling that out is going to give me 5. So I'm left with x minus 5. The second set of terms over here, that should be 45, uh, has a common factor of 9. So I pull the 9 out and that's going to give me negative x plus 5. Okay, I look at this and now I want to factor out the common binomial factor. I don't quite have one, but I can modify this, do some more something else to it so that I do have a common factor. x minus 5 and negative x plus 5. Those differ just by the signs. That means if I factor out a negative 1 from one of these, they'll be the same. Okay. So I'm going to factor a negative 1 from this second uh, expression over here. Now I've got a common binomial factor, and when I see that, I can factor that out. So I'm grouping the 4x squared minus 9, and then I'm grouping, I'm just factoring out x minus 5. So I end up with 
again, bringing that greatest common factor along the whole time, 6x times 4x squared minus 9 times x minus 5. Now, one thing you may notice is that 4x squared minus 9 is the difference of two squares. Difference of two squares. So this is going to factor out to this form, a plus b, a minus b. So a will be 2x, b is going to be 3. So 2x plus 3, so in this form, 2x minus 3, and then I still have my x minus 5. So this was a bit complicated, but made easier by pulling out the greatest common factor and then looking and saying, okay, I can use grouping because I have a polynomial with four terms. Then grouping the first two terms, second two terms, pulling out my common factor from each, factoring out the common binomial, and then recognizing that I ended up with the difference of two squares, which I could easily factor into this. So this is the factored form of this expression that we were given.